It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here at the Prince George's Schools where we test science IQs. Yes, we're going to be asking some science questions and we invite you to play along and test your own science IQ with these three outstanding young players here today. You know, we are coming to you on Zoom as so much has been coming to you this entire pandemic year. All of our students are safe in their homes and I'm here in the studio in Landover. We've adjusted things here on Science Ball. Unlike the past 35 years, we have nobody here. There are no buzzers, but it is still a competition. Uh, we still have our same six categories and each team is going to receive 18 questions. Our two teams today, different but comparable in value. And the team that is ahead at the end will have a chance to come back and play our game again and perhaps, perhaps compete for the county championship this year. Speaking of the categories of questions, there are six of them. And if you're not familiar with our show, these are they. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. So we're just about ready to begin and uh, all of our teams get 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. They are ambassadors for their schools and they win just by being here today. And it takes a lot of courage to do this, sitting at home all by yourself. But these young people here, they've been preparing and they're training. And like I say, no matter what happens, they win. All right, let's meet our first team. They hail from Dodge Park Elementary School. And let's meet the captain, Donetta. Donetta, wave to everybody if you would. She is a sixth grader out there. We also have joining her from the sixth grade, Solomon. Solomon, say hello to the audience. All right. And Rounding out the team is a fifth grader. Olu is here today, and she is just bubbling out there. I know she can't wait to play. Nice to have you with us as well. All right, let's get start started. Our first category is green things questions, all about plants. There's a five-point question, a 15-point question, and a 25-point question. Easy, little tougher, toughest of them all. Here's your green things question for five points. While people interested in their family's genealogy, their history, talk often about the family tree, they also talk about this part of a plant that explains how the family started. Um, can we, can we, can we, can we talk to each other. Yes. Okay. I think it's because, because uh, that's, that's where. Uh, that's good. All right, Donetta, unmute yourself and let me hear what you're thinking. Tell me what you heard from Olu. Um, can you please, please uh, uh, repeat the question? Uh, we're talking about family history. Uh, mm -hmm. When we do, we talk about the family tree. You probably heard about it, the family tree when you're talking about the family history. Well, people also talk about this part of a plant that explains how the family actually started. And Olu, I couldn't hear exactly what you were saying. I was hoping maybe Solomon or Donetta had heard what you said. Um, um, I said it. Roots. Roots. Roots is the absolutely right answer. Good, five points. We're having some difficulty hearing you guys, and you know this is always the problem with Zoom. So again, keep your microphones off. 
Only turn them on when you, when you say something and then lean as close in as you can so we can hear what you're saying. All right, here's the Green Things question for 15 points. How many of you grow a garden where you live? Anybody have a garden at home? If you do, you know, if you're planning this year to grow a garden, and you want to grow peppers and tomatoes and eggplants, put the soil tray with their seeds on top of your refrigerator or the radiator because it'll get them to do this G initial thing faster. What do you want those seeds to do that putting them on top of the refrigerator with that warmth will help them to do faster? It must begin with the letter G. Um, can we talk about these? Go ahead. Guys, guys, I think it's Say it again, Donetta. I think, I think it's germinate. Germinate is correct, yes, for 15 points. Good. All right, for 15 po or for 25 points in green things. The second largest trees in America are the famous sugar pines. Sugar pines. Hardly anyone's seen them. They're very famous, but we don't see them around here too often. But unlike what deciduous cousins with a similar name are not a source of pancake syrup. The, so the sugar pines don't produce the substance, the source for pancake syrup. But these other, other trees that are the deciduous cousins of the sugar pines do. Name that tree. Go ahead, Olu. Is it a maple tree? Sugar maple is right, absolutely right, because you tap the tree and the sap comes out. Absolutely, the sugar maple. So you got all of them right. You got the roots, you got the germinate, you got the maple. All right, let's go to the zoo. You know, if you can't sleep at night, it's recommended that you can count these ovine animals. Go ahead, Olu. <laughs> sheep is right. Yes, they tell you, count sheep. Lay there in the bed and say, okay, one, two, three, four. And by the, before you get to 50, you're usually asleep. Good. For 15 points. I need two answers here. If you're copying someone else's speech or behavior, you are said to be acting like these two animals. One, a P-initialed bird, and the other an A-initialed primate that can mimic us. What two animals mimic us? A P-initialed bird and an A-initialed primate. A uh, uh, parrot. parrot. Parrot's the bird. Now give me the A initialed primate, a creature mm -hmm. that mimics us. Correct answer there is an ape. If you ape or you parrot somebody, you mimic them. That's the term. Here's the 25 point question in the zoo parade category. These creatures have no fins, F-I-N-S, and they don't sparkle in the sky at night. But these usually five-armed echinoderms that live in the ocean are still called these. Um, I, I think Solomon. it's a starfish. Yeah, it's a starfish. You got it. Yes, indeed. You got yourself 25 points. Nice job there, young man. Great. Like Patrick on SpongeBob. I don't think he's got five arms, though. I think he's only got three. Let's go to the body system questions. Five, here's your five point question. If you're a dancer, you're probably good dancers, maybe not. But if someone is awkward and a really bad dancer, they're said to have two left one of these body parts. Um, <laughs> Feet, that's right. They're said to have two left feet. That's right. They just can't do anything right. Good answer. Here's 15 points. While your body's larynx 
is also known as the voice box. The pharynx, P-H-A-R-Y-N-X, is better known as this body part. Is this the esophagus? It is the esophagus, so the pharynx. Nicely done, Olu. Olu, you were on a roll here today. So is Solomon, so is Donetta. Here is the 25-point question in body systems, and it's a visual question. Look at the picture, please. You know, today, people suffering from COVID-19 are often placed in something called a ventilator that helps them to breathe. But back in the 1950s, when this picture was taken, people suffering from a disease called polio and unable to breathe were put into an iron what that looked like a coffin. This was called an iron what? Yes, Olu. <laughs> Say it again. Was it an iron ventilator? Not, an, not a ventilator, it had a different name. Donetta, that was called an iron what that helped polio victims to breathe. Make sure you unmute yourself if you want to talk to me. Um, maybe it was an iron, I'm not, I'm not sure. sure. Okay, it was called an iron lung, an iron lung. Same idea as a ventilator. So you are right now at 145 points. Congratulations, we'll bring you back for the second half of the show in just a few moments. Pat yourselves on the back, you did a nice job. It is now time to meet the second of our two teams today from Mattapanai Elementary School. And let's meet their wonderful players. First of all, our captain, Nigel. Nigel, wave to everybody if you would. Hey, Nigel, nice to have you on the show. And joining him is Michael. Where's Michael? Hey, Michael, I like your backdrop there. Looks pretty cool. And where is Ricky? Hey, Ricky, you look like you, I like your shirt says science on there, you're, you're right here, the science squad, that's pretty cool. Do you all have that shirt? Do you all have a science squad shirt? Hey, yes indeed, you are in it to win it. Nice going guys. All right, let's get started. I have three questions for you to start out from the category green things. The easy one worth five points, then 15 points a little tougher and 25 the toughest of them all. Here's your five point question. While the maple leaf is the symbol of Canada. This S initialed green thing with four leaves is the symbol of Ireland. I know you've seen one of these. You've seen four leafed clovers. The S initial name is a shamrock, a shamrock. Let's go to the 15 point question in green things. American poet Walt Whitman wrote a famous poem called Leaves of This Green Thing that we think of as having blades rather than leaves. What green thing? Can you repeat the question? Yes. The, the, I'm looking for the last part of the title of author, uh, American poet Walt Whitman's famous poem, Leaves of This, a, th a green thing that we think of as having blades rather than leaves. That's grass, grass, blades of grass, and it's called Leaves of Grass, that poem. Uh, you know, you can cut yourself on a, on a blade of, of grass if you're not too careful. All right, here's a visual for you and a multiple choice question, the 25 point question in green things. These trees that are the nickname of the state of South Carolina because their spongy trunks help to defend Charleston's fort from incoming cannonballs are the eucalyptus, the palmetto, or the sequoia. So you got a choice of three uh, trees here. The eucalyptus, the palmetto, or the sequoia? Eucalyptus. Is it the palmetto? It is the palmetto, yes. In fact, if you've ever driven to Myrtle Beach, 
you know, when you drive in there, you see those trees. Wow, look how far south I am. It's a kind of palm, absolutely right. So the spongy trunk was also part of your clue there. Let's go to the zoo. Zoo prayed for five points. While salmon fish leave the ocean and return to fresh water in order to give birth, to spawn, these slippery fish, with a shocking defense, go the other way, from freshwater streams out to the ocean to reproduce. Jellyfish? No. Oh. Okay, so I hear jellyfish, I hear, I hear eels. So, Nigel, which one are you going to choose or something else? You're the captain. We will go with eels. Eels is right, yes. Your clue there was slippery and shocking defense. So listen to every word. Good. And shocking also, jellyfish can shock you too with their stingers. Uh, absolutely right, Ricky. Let's go to 15 points in zoo. Despite its name, Lyme disease, spelled L-Y-M-E, Lyme disease is not caused by limes, the fruit, but rather by the bite of these blood-sucking arachnids that also spread Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Leeches? Leeches? Leeches is a good guess. In this case, they're ticks. Ticks. Your dog gets ticks. If you go hiking, you got to come in and check yourself for ticks because they can spread Lyme disease. Here's your 25 point question in zoo. These P, as in Paul, these P-initial creatures that live inside the coral in coral reefs have the same name as certain growths that can occur in your throat or your intestines. P-initialed. Those are called polyps. Polyps. P-O-L-Y-P-S. The little polyps. They're the creatures that actually live inside the coral on the coral reef. All right, here's the body system for you. Five points. While a rod and a reel are helpful if you go fishing, rods and cones, rods and cones are necessary if you want to do this. C, rods and cones are the cells in the back of your eye that let you see in black and white and color. Here's a multiple choice question for you in body systems for 15. Multiple choice. In the process of excretion, E-X-C-R-E-T-I-O-N, in the process of excretion, is a hormone released from a gland? Is sweat released from your pores? Or is saliva produced in your mouth? Talk it out. So, hey, hey, uh, uh, Nigel, I think it's this. You know, and then, you know, kind of bandy it about because I know it's tough when you're not sitting next to each other there. All right, I'll repeat the question for you, and then I want to hear an answer. All right. In the process of excretion, E-X-C-R-E-T-I-O-N, excrete, excretion, is a hormone re released from a gland? Is sweat released from your pores? Or is saliva produced in your mouth? So hormone, sweat, uh, or saliva? Saliva. Okay. Saliva. Okay, so I hear a number of different answers there. Thank you guys for weighing in. And Nigel, you pick. Is it pores? It's pores, yes. So, uh, sweat comes out of your pores, that's correct, yes. Excretion. Excretion is also describes when you urinate. You're taking something from inside your body and bringing it out. All right, here's your 25-point question. It's a visual question. Let's have a look. It's an interesting creature. If you go into the ocean, you see something called a chambered nautilus. It's an ancient, ancient, ancient animal. But it shape, it shape, looks very much like your body's cochlea, C-O-C-H-L-E-A, a structure that can be found in this sense organ. The 
the C-O-C-H-L-E-A, the cochlea, looks very much like that chambered nautilus. That's a structure that can be found in which, which of your body's sense organs? All right, so your sense organs are your eyes, your nose, your ears, your tongue, and your skin. In this case, some of you might have heard of people when they're hard of hearing, they get a cochlear implant. Cochlea, it looks like a snail shell inside your ear, just like that chambered nautilus. Hearing? Ear was, actually, ear was the right answer. So at the end of the first round, Matt Apanai, you have 95 points, and you'll be able to add to that tally when we see you in again in a couple minutes. See you then. It is now time to go back to the team from Dodge Park. And before we ask any science questions, a few personal ones. Let's find out about these three outstanding young people here playing our game today. Let's go to Donetta. She is a sixth grader. And Donetta, uh, why did you want to be on the science bowl? And make sure you unmute yourself there. Um, um, I, want I want to be on the science bowl because I want to myself. myself. Um, um, I, I like myself. But I'm not the best. I want to challenge That is a wonderful thing to do in life. You always have to challenge yourself. It's like in sports. You always want to play someone who's just a little better than you are. So you can kind of come up to their level there. You know, if everybody uh, is an easy opponent, you don't learn much. So yeah, you, you take a chance and you're doing that today. What do you want to do when you grow up? When I, when grow, I grow up, up I'm going to be a veterinarian. Veterinarian. Well, well, some lucky dog or cat or whatever animal you choose to work on is going to be lucky because I like your, your manner. You seem to be very, very patient. Good luck in the second half here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Solomon. Solomon, nice to have you with us today. Solomon's also a sixth grader, and uh, you came up with a couple of good answers. How do you know so much science, Solomon? Well, well I, had I had a great, great science, science teacher, teacher wow. in fifth grade. grade. What was the science teacher's name? Miss Ms. Arcalita. Miss Arcalita, and she is she is feeling wonderful now because she's also the coach of your team. And we know what a wonderful coach and teacher she is, and she's been with us for many years, even helps us judge the science ball occasionally. So tell me about yourself. What do you like to do in your spare time? Well, well not, not much. much. I like, I like to, to go, go on the team and watch some TV a little. little. Yeah, that's it. You know, in during the pandemic, it's been hard to find things to occupy ourselves. It's a, been kind of a boring year in many, many ways. What do you want to do someday? Um, I want to be a, a scientist, scientist or, or an engineer. engineer. Scientist or engineer. And they are actually one and the same, the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and math. You're a fine young man. Nice to have you here today. Let's talk to Olu. Olu is the fifth grader among the group, and Olu... Boy, you have dazzled us in the first round here. Uh, you have a lot of poise. I love all your energy. How do you know so much science? Um, my name is Pippi. It starts with my teeth. Yes. And um, before I start, I like to know what I'm doing. Yes. And I like to know what I'm doing. Yes. And I like to know what I'm doing. Wow. Yeah, watching those videos helps. And uh, I can tell you're an excellent student. You're doing all the right things, and you're really prepared for today. And what do you see yourself doing someday? Someday? Being a performer. Yeah. But also so I myself as a chef. Wow. A chef, too, huh? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we all have to eat, and we all like to go out to eat. So if you're a good chef, they'll beat a pass to your door. Good luck in the second half. All right, are you ready for your last nine questions? I know you are. You guys are, you're, you're a tight team. Here we go. Your first category is let's get physical. Five, 15, 25. Here's the five point question, let's get physical. While constellations are often named for animals, so too are individual stars, like the star Sirius, S-I-R-I. I-U-S, better known as what canine star? Um, um, so so this is canine? That's exactly right. It is the dog star. In fact, you know, uh, Donetta, 
She's gonna be our veterinarian someday. She's gonna be working on dogs. Sirius is the dog star. Got yourself five points. Let's get physical for 15. All right, this is a multiple choice. I don't know if you've done this experiment in science class, but it's fun, it's like magic. The iodine starch test, you have iodine, which you know you can put on wounds, and if you drop it on a substance and it turns bluish black, it means that the substance contains starch. It is called the iodine starch test. So if you added iodine to the following four items, which one would turn bluish black because it contains starch? Would it be sugar cubes, onion juice, distilled water, or a piece of newspaper? Which of those four would contain starch and turn blue-black if you added iodine to it? A sugar cube, onion juice, distilled water, or a piece of newspaper? Um, I, I think newspaper. newspaper. It is the newspaper because newspapers come from trees and trees make starch because trees go through photosynthesis and sugar becomes starch. Good, 15 points. For 25, the numbers on a calculator or certain wristwatches, for instance, are the result of an LCD. The L means light, the D means display, and the C means one of these, often used to describe the ball used by fortune tellers. Go ahead, Olu. I think it's, I think a, it's crystal. a crystal. It is a crystal, yes, the crystal ball, LCD, liquid crystal display is correct for 25 points. Nice. Let's go to Potpourri. You're doing really well. I like your smiles, too. Potpourri for five points. For many centuries, Mankind thought that this heavenly body was made of Swiss cheese or green cheese. Was it Say it again, Olu. All right. What heavenly body was once thought to be made of Swiss cheese or green cheese. What do you think, Solomon? <laughs> Correct answer there is the moon. The moon. Because of all those pock marks, it looks like the pieces of Swiss cheese. Yeah. They also talked about there was a man in the moon because it looked like there was a face up there. Of course, we know better now. 15 points under potpourri. One of the most common kinds of lettuce has what same name as the frozen hazard that caused the Titanic ship to sink. Was it an iceberg? It was an iceberg, absolutely right. Yes, it collided with an iceberg. They said the Titanic was unsinkable, but it sank on its maiden voyage. Nice answer. All right, Pope Brief for 25 points. Dr. Anthony Fauci, who we all know is on television all the time, talking to us about the pandemic. Dr. Anthony Fauci has encouraged people to get vaccinated because, as he says, if a virus can't replicate, it can't do this, the process whereby it changes. It rhymes with replicate. Um, duplicate? Say it again. Duplicate? Not duplicate, no. The process whereby it changes. It can't replicate, if it can't replicate, it can't mutate. Mutate was the answer there, because that's why we're getting those different strains that keep popping up. Let's go to Dateline. We have three more questions for you. You're gonna do, you're gonna do well here. Here we go. NASA has been exploring ways to drop a lander, a spacecraft, onto the surface of Europa. That's an icy moon orbiting Jupiter. They have named that lander for the icy star of Frozen, the movie, who wanted so much just to go to the beach. Oh. Oh. Olaf is right, yeah, remember Olaf, he just wanted to go to the beach. And remember, 
Elsa at the end, she made it so that it was perpetually, you know, sunny around them. It was very nice. All right, here's your 15 point question. Multiple choice. When Dutch explorer William Barents and his crew got trapped in ice at the North Pole way back in the year 1596, they soon ran low on food, as you can imagine, especially citrus fruits. They'd had no oranges or lemons or grapefruits, meaning that the men came down with a disease that is brought on by a lack of citrus fruits and vitamin C. Is that disease called berry berry, rickets, or scurvy? Scurvy? It is scurvy, absolutely right, which is why you should be eating those citrus fruits every day. For 25 points, last question for you in the game is a visual. Look at this amazing building that's gonna be built right across the Potomac River in Virginia, in Arlington. Amazon, that's gonna be their new headquarters building. It's amazing, isn't it? It is going to have, as you can see here, what H initialed twisted shape, much like the DNA molecule. Uh, uh, a quite. I know you've studied DNA, and DNA looks like two spiral, it's like a spiral staircase twisted together. It's called a double helix. Helix, H-E-L-I-X was the right answer there. Still, good game today. You got 225 points. We'll bring you back in a couple minutes with everybody else, and you can wave goodbye to everybody watching on TV. It is now time to talk to the team from Mattapanai. Let's find out about these young men a little bit about what they like to do in their spare time and where they're headed in their lives. Let's just go first to Nigel, our captain. Nigel, tell us why you wanted to be on the show. I wanted to be on the show because I love science and my brother was also on the show. He was. Well, uh, what school did he represent? Was he also from Mattapanai? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was from Mattapanai. Wow. And how old is he now? Where is he now? He is in, in, in Aki, he, and he's 13. Very nice, very nice. Well, you're part of a family tradition, and we love to see that. What do you want to do someday, Nigel? I, I want, want to be an in, in interior, interior designer design when I grow up. Really? Wow. So you're a very creative young guy, and your science is going to help you definitely in that. And, you know, on this show, uh, I want to hear what you know, but I also hope you learn things. So no matter what happens on this show, I hope you take away some things and think, oh, I never thought about that before. So count this as a, a way to demonstrate what you know and also a chance to, to learn some things as well. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's talk to uh, Ricky. Hey, Ricky. Ricky, tell us uh, why you wanted to be on the science poll. Have you been watching? <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great now tell me about those shirts that you're wearing did you uh who made them for you uh, that was that was the person person. wow who, who yeah, they, well, they look really good. In fact, they look as good as our Science Bowl uh, logo that we have here. What do you want to do someday, Ricky? Stay nice and close to your microphone. Just kind of sit still. Great. Great. All right. Well, uh, good luck in all of that. And uh, you're a fine young man, and I, you'll, I know you'll be successful. Let's talk to the other teammate there. Let's go to Michael. Hey, Michael. Michael, tell us about the backdrop. What are we looking at? Um, space. space. Space, yeah. Well, uh, space is certainly on our minds now. Uh, would you yourself like to go to space? Would you like to go to the space station or to Mars one day? Um, I'm afraid of space. Yeah, listen, it's a scary spot. And especially with Mars, it's a one-way trip. You wouldn't be coming back because it takes so long. Yeah, some people really want to do that, but it's a, it is a huge, huge risk. What do you want to do someday? Um, I'm obvious. A? A, a surgeon. surgeon. A surgeon. Wow. 
So you've got medical school to look forward to and then internships and all, and this science is gonna serve you well as I was telling your captain there. Yep, it's good to let me know what you know at this point, but I hope I'll be part of your education, that you'll learn some things here that you can take with you and one day you can look back when you're a surgeon and say, hey, guess what? It all started back there on Science Bowl and it started back there with uh, Mr. Green and Miss Coleman Williams to uh, warn rather when they were teaching us about science. All right, I have nine more questions for you uh, in the let's get physical category, uh, science potpourri, and dateline. So if you're ready, here's the let's get physical question in five points. If you are basketball fans, you know in the NBA, one of the best teams is the Golden State Warriors. If they wanted to be chemically correct, they would put what two-letter symbol for gold on their uniforms. Can you repeat? I'm looking for the two-letter symbol for gold that you would find on the periodic table of elements that might be nice to be on the uniform of the Golden State Warriors in the NBA. Okay, I see Michael there. Mike, what do you think? I don't know the letters, but would it be silver and bronze? No, it wouldn't be silver and bronze, no. I'm trying to find the symbol for gold. It's A, capital A, small u. Capital A, small u is the chemical symbol for gold on the periodic table of elements. Let's go to 15 points and let's get physical. Recently, we were all told that there was going to be a super moon out there. Super moon? A super moon is not a scientific term, but it is often used when a moon in this phase is closer than normal to Earth. So think to yourself, what are the different phases of the moon? And which phase would be called a supermoon when it's especially close to Earth? Okay, Nigel. Full moon. Full moon is right, yes. A full moon, it's really close. Nice job. A full moon gets you 15 points. Let's go to the 25-point question and let's get physical. Meteor showers are caused when little bits of a comet, little stones, pass through the atmosphere at 37 miles per second. That generates enough heat by what force to set them ablaze? So when those little bits of the comet come through our atmosphere, coming down toward Earth, luckily most of them burn up before they hit the Earth. What force is it that causes them to burn up, Nigel? Is it, is it friction? Say it again. Friction. friction is right. Absolutely right. 25 points. Yeah, you know your stuff. Make sure you weigh in there. Nice job, guys. Okay, let's go on now to science potpourri. There is a campaign now to have American plants, to save them, that were once abundant. They were C initial trees. They were mostly wiped out by a disease. And at Christmas time, you've probably heard this Christmas carol, they're often sung about in a carol that says that they are roasting on an open fire. What kind of nut tree is being sung there Michael, Michael, I saw the light bulb go off. Name it. Chestnut? Yeah, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. That a boy, that's the way to do it. Got yourself five points. Now we're on a roll for 15 points. Seaweed was once one of the major sources, sources of this I-initialed nutrient that is critical to the health of your thyroid gland. This I-initialed nutrient is added to the salt that you use so that your thyroid gland doesn't develop something called a goiter. Name that I initial nutrient. Is it, is it iron? Iron? Not iron, iron. Iron's chemical symbol is Fe. The name of this substance is iodine. Iodine is in salt. If you look at your salt when you go home, it'll say iodized salt or non-iodized salt, which is oftentimes the sea salt you get. All right, here's the 25-point question for you. 
Among the vaccines now available for childhood diseases, and you probably got this vaccine to be a student here in Prince George's schools, is called the MMR vaccine. That stands for, one of the M's is for measles, the R stands for rubella, and this other M disease is caused by a swelling of your parotid glands. Name it for 25 points. Is it mumps? It is mumps, absolutely right. Measles, mumps, and rubella. Thank you, Nigel. Great, 25 more points for you. Let's go to Dateline for five. Super Bowl party goers were worried this year that the supply of these boned chicken parts that have served as boneless or really just chicken nuggets would run out. Wings. Say it again. Like chicken wings. Chicken wings. That's right. Chicken wings. Yeah, they were running out of chicken wings of all things. You know, you can't have a Super Bowl party without chicken wings. Yeah, or guacamole. You got it. All right. Dateline for 15. Early in March this month, you're able to look up into the night sky when it's clear and you will witness a quadruple conjunction where the moon and three other planets are in a perfect line. The other three planets are the smallest planet and the two largest planets. Name those three to earn yourself 15 points. The smallest and the two largest planets. All right, I want to hear some ferment. Let's start throwing some names out here. I want to know the name of the smallest planet and the two largest planets that will be in a perfect line with the moon if you look up in the sky this month. So the smallest is Mercury, the one next to the sun, and the two largest are Saturn and Jupiter. Saturn and Jupiter. Last question of the game. How many of you know what the Empire State Building is? It's one of the tallest buildings in New York City. In fact, it was the tallest until they built the World Trade Centers that were destroyed on 9-11. The Empire State Building in New York City has just announced that it will get all of its energy needs from this non-polluting source that is measured by meteorologists with an anemometer. Solar. Now, good try. Wind. Wind. An anemometer measured wind. So it is going to be wind power that, uh, wind energy rather, that powers all of the lights and the elevators in the Empire State Building. So your final tally today, Matt and I, is 170 points. You had a good second round. You had a good second round, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Science Ball. Two outstanding young teams here today. And you know, these are some tough questions. These are tough questions. I bet you had a tough time at home as well. But you, know, you saw how well they acquitted themselves and how they worked together. And these young people are our future. We are going to be in good hands. Congratulations to all of you today. All of you are winners for being on the Science Bowl. Our final tally today is Mattapanai 170 and Dodge Park 225. So Dodge Park, congratulations especially to you. You're going to be moving on in the competition. We're going to be seeing you. We will see you later today in another match. And all of you had great poise, great sportsmanship, and wonderful personalities. And that counts for as much as anything in this world. So keep challenging yourself. Keep watching Science Bowl. And keep being kind to your teachers. All right. Everybody, we'll see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye.